video, I'm going to show you how to simplify thirds. So these are thirds, they're just numbers that you can't root to find a whole number. So if I was to square root eight, I would get a decimal answer. So this is an example of a third. So when I'm simplifying thirds, I'm going to be using these two properties over here. And it just means that if you square root a number and multiply it by another number that's being square rooted, you'll get the same answer as if you multiply those two numbers together and square root the answer. And likewise for divide. So in the first one, I'm going to be using this property over here and I need to split the number eight up into its factors. So the number eight has two pairs of factors. We've got one times eight or we could do two times four. So we have a choice. You need to choose the pair that include a square number. Now hopefully you know what square numbers are. One squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine and so on. So those square numbers are really important. You need to know those. So I'm going to use this pair here. So I'm going to rewrite the square root of eight as root two multiplied by root four. So it's exactly the same thing. We're just rewriting it in another way. So because four is a square number, it means we can calculate this. The square root of four is two. And remember, we're multiplying these together. So if I've got root two multiplied by two, it's just the same as writing two root two. This is just a nice tidy way of writing our final answer. Okay, on to the next one. So I'm going to be doing the same thing. I'm going to be splitting that number 12 up into its factors. So we've got more choices this time. We've got one times 12, two times six, or three times four. All of those numbers multiply to give 12. But remember, you need to choose the number that includes a square number. So it's this one, because remember from earlier, the number four is a square number, so we can square root it. So I'm going to rewrite root 12 as root three multiplied by root four. Okay, it's exactly the same thing. Then we can simplify this one. The square root of four is just two. So I'm left with root three multiplied by two, not forgetting to tidy it up at the end. I'm just going to put that number at the front with the root at the end. But essentially, they're the same thing. Okay, now, this time we're going to use the rule the other way around. So if I'm multiplying these two roots together, it's the same as square rooting those two numbers times together. So 18 multiplied by two is 36. And look, well 36 is another square number, so we can square root it. The square root of 36 is just six. So that's the answer to the third example. Now, onto division. So remember this rule over here. When we're square rooting a number and dividing by another number that's being square rooted, it's the same as square rooting those two numbers being divided with each other. So I'm doing 27 divided by three. Well, 27 divided by three is nine. I'm not forgetting that square root's still there. And nine is a square number, so we can square root it. The square root of nine is three. So there we go. All right, now, on the last one here, we've got to use this rule again. And I'm going to split root 28 up into its factors. So we've got a choice again. We've got, well, one times 28, but that won't get me anywhere. Two times 14, but neither of those are square numbers. Or we've got four times seven. Well, we know four is a square number. We've used it already. So I'm going to rewrite root 28 as root four multiplied by root seven. And now I'm going to do the same thing with 63. I know that seven times nine is 63, and nine is a square number, so that's good. So I'm going to rewrite this one as root seven multiplied by root nine. So now I can just work out those square root of the square number ones. So this one, square root of four is two. And over here, we've got the square root of nine, which is three. So I'm left with two multiplied by root seven, which is just two root seven. And three multiplied by root seven, which is just three root seven. Not forgetting, we're adding them together. And there's actually one last step. We can add those two terms together. If we have two root sevens and then we add three more root sevens, 
Well, that gives us 5 root 7. So there's the final answer to this one down here. OK, I've got a few more examples to finish. OK, so just like before, I'm going to use these rules over here and I'm going to rewrite these roots splitting them up into their factors. So I'm going to rewrite the square root of 8 as root 2 times root 4 because 2 multiplied by 4 gives me 8, so they're the same thing. And 4 is a square number, so I can calculate this later on. Don't forget to plus because we're adding these together. And now I'm going to do the same thing with root 18. I'm going to rewrite it, splitting it up into factors. And I'm going to choose 2 times 9 because 2 times 9 is 18, and 9 is another square number. So now I can calculate. Well, I know the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 9 is 3. So I'm left with two lots of root 2 here, and over here I've got three lots of root 2, not forgetting to add them together. So the final answer, well, I've got two lots of root 2 here, and then I'm adding on three more lots of root 2, which gives me 5 root 2. So there's the final answer. All right, on to the next one. Well, I'm going to use the division rule this time. So this can be rewritten as the square root of 125 divided by 5. They're exactly the same thing. And 125 divided by 5, well, that's 25. So it's the same as square rooting the number 25. And because 25 is a square number, we can square root it. And the square root of 25 is just 5. OK, so there we go. And now for the last one. So I'm going to do the same thing as in the other examples. And I'm going to rewrite this, splitting it up into its factors. So I can rewrite 75 as root 3 times root 25 because 3 times 25 is 75, and 25 is a square number, which is perfect. Now, don't forget you're adding them together. And now I'm going to rewrite root 12. So I think we did root 12 earlier. I can rewrite that as root 3 times root 4, because 3 times 4 is 12, and 4 is a square number. Now let's work this out. Well, the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 4 is 2. So I've got 5 lots of root 3 here, and over on this side I've got 2 lots of root 3, and remember you're adding them together, so 5 root 3 plus 2 root 3 is just 7 root 3. So that's the final answer for the last one. Okay, so there you go, there's simplifying thirds. I will have more videos on thirds coming up soon because there's lots to know, like rationalising the denominator and expanding brackets, but there's just a few examples to get you started. So, bye-bye from me.